Hey everyone, Sebastian here, and I wanted to make a follow-up video to my previous video talking about Cardano's mon monolithic architecture. In this video, I want to talk about the current ongoing efforts to try and split up Cardano's monolithic architecture into separate components so that people can easily replace existing components with new ones that are more well-suited for this sp specific use case. So I wanted to give you a visual representation of all the projects going on in this video. And so let's start with at the bottom, the ADA token, right? So ADA is basically uh, the trust network for Cardano. So ownership of the ADA token is how you define participation inside the Cardano protocol. On top of this, you have the consensus system, which is called Ouroboros. So for people who don't know, Cardano's proof of stake system is powered by the Ouroboros protocol and so that's another layer. And then on top of that, we have Plutus Core, or just sometimes called just Plutus, which is Cardano's virtual machine. And on top of this, we may have, you know, some DAP up here, like MintSwap or SundaySwap or any of these other DAPs that exist out there. So this is what Cardano's architecture looks like right now today. And the goal is to basically make that any part of this stack can be modified um, and notably modified without asking for permission or help from the current Cardano developers, right? Ideally, this should be permi permissionless innovation and should not bottleneck on the same set of people. So first, let's start off with sidechains. So sidechains are a way to basically switch out the consensus protocol entirely, switch out the virtual machine entirely, and have entirely new dApps running on a separate system. Um, and one example of this is Milkamita C1. So Milkamita C1 for Cardano is a custom sidechain. So this custom sidechain runs Hyperledger Besu for consensus instead of Ouroboros. And it runs EVM for smart contracts. So you can see that Milkamita C1 for Cardano is a sidechain that, um, you know, uses Hyper uh, oops. Ledger Visu. And on top of this, it has EVM. And then on top of this, there's other dApps like BlueShift, for example. And so it'll, it has allowed people to basically innovate while still using the ADA token. Remember, MilkMinus C1 does not have its own token. It allows people to, you know, take in improvements from Ethereum's ecosystem on consensus. It allows people to take in improvements from the Ethereum ecosystem on EVM. It allows DAP developers to build out DAPs uh, without necessarily having to go through the Ouroboros or Plutus stack. And the benefit of this system is that, um, you know, for example, Milkmaid C1 has four second block times and instant finality. So these are, you know, very different properties you get from Ouroboros. So this is, you know, leveraging the trust network and switching out the whole stack. What if you still want to use Ouroboros? You know, Ouroboros has a lot of very interesting and very powerful ideas in it, and you want to reuse this to build, you know, a separate system. So we call these usually overlay networks, and one of the overlay networks you might be familiar with is called Mithril. So Mithril is an overlay network for Cardano, and when I say overlay network, um, what that means is that for Mithril to work, a subset of stake pools on Cardano opt in to want to validate this Mytho network. So for example, maybe like 80% of Cardano stake pools say, okay, I want to be a Mithril operator. And then they generate these Mithril certificates that help power um, efficient like clients, help power um, bridges, help power uh, potentially in the future quantum resistant checkpoints and all these kinds of other systems. Another example you might have heard of is state proofs, um, which is wor works differently, but it's similar idea for Algorand. And these are the kind of overlay networks. Another overlay network you might have heard of is Mamba. So, um, by the way, I, I forgot to mention that, you know, because these are all using Ouroboros, you can think of this as like a extra computation layer. So, um, you might have heard of, of Mamba that basically adds EVM 
on top of Ouroboros. And ideally, Mamba um, will also be able to be used to deploy other kind of overlay networks with other VMs as well. And so this is a way to basically create new networks, overlay networks that use a subset of the Cardinal stake pools on mainnet. All right, so this is also ongoing. What about um, re replacing just Plutus Core, right? We want to stay on the mainnet version of Ouroboros, right? We don't want to go on our, on our overlay system, but we want to swap out the virtual machine. And the most common way to do this is layer two solutions that use rollups or validiums. So for example, you might know like Optimism, Arbitrum. These are projects that work on the same idea or ZK Sync as uh, another project that works on the same idea. So with this, you could have, you know, other virtual machines like Fuel VM, Woo VM, and then you could have, um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Oh, SVM by Solana. Right, so you could have these different virtual machines from different blockchains all come in and attach to Cardano as layer two solutions that add new support for new virtual machines. So this kind of red area I just drew is a part that currently uh, no project is actively working on. There is a goal of the Milk Meta project to eventually um, you know, be able to build these kinds of layer two solutions uh, for Cardano. Um, but there's currently no good way to do this at the moment. I've done a previous video about this topic of why um, storing data on Cardano main is difficult and probably how these projects will work in the future. If you're curious, how we'll ev eventually get to rollups and, and validiums like this is we'll probably um, give up on the rollup solution. Um, it's possible to do with Plutus currently um, as of the Vassal hard fork, but it's very expensive and not uh, super fast. So most likely what we would do is we would have a data layer as an overlay network and then say, you know, 80% of stake pools run the data overlay network. And then we use Validiums to then uh, power this kind of uh, layer two solution. So that's most likely the path that Cardano will end up taking. Um, but this depends on this kind of overlay network existing, uh, which is still kind of in the R&D stage. So this will be the next step. And um, lastly, what if we want to keep Plutus, um, but we want to add, you know, some new extra functionality on top of Plutus, or we want to just have more efficient transactions with Plutus. And the project that does this is called Hydra, which is a layer two on top of Plutus. And so you have Hydra, but in the future, you could reuse the Hydra research to build other kinds of there are two systems that exist on top of Plutus. And so you can see, um, you know, through the system that uh, Cardano has multiple projects in the works to tackle replacing different parts of the virtual machine. And the great thing about this is that none of them require um, bottlenecking on the developers of the core Cardano protocol, right? So in the future, um, you know, anybody else can build their custom stack reusing the work that um, happened for Milkmaid C1. So, you know, Milkmaid C1 is kind of pioneering this side of things. Um, Mamba and Mithril, written by IoT, is kind of pioneering this side of the overlay networks. Um, currently, um, you know, Milkmaid is planning to talk about this in the future, but, you know, we're kind of missing this overlay network portion. And then IoG is working on uh, Mithril on top of here for um, this kind of switching off or, or improvements uh, to Plutus Core as layer twos. So um, if you want to know kind of more about what I was talking about in my previous video, the one of the main problems we have with Cardano right now is that Plutus Core is kind of deterministic and it's kind of hard to work with. And so a lot of projects for their specific use case want some other virtual machine, um, but they can't easily do this at the moment for Cardano, which I think um, is a super important use case that we should enable. And I think, you know, supporting these kinds of red boxes over here should be one of the key items in the current roadmap. So I think, you know, um, all these other kinds of overlay networks you could build are, are, are obviously useful in their own way. But I think building this kind of data layer is the most important component of it because it allows, um, you know, building all these orange boxes over here, which allow a lot more flexibility in the protocol.
And then once we have these orange boxes, Plutus Core over here is no longer like a special virtual machine for Cardano. It would just be one of many different virtual machines that dApps can use, right? Which means that if you want to build a new virtual machine for Cardano, you can do it without having to modify the core protocol. And the developers of Cardano no longer have to worry about, you know, improvements to Plutus Core if we don't want to work on it. They can focus on Ouroboros and upgrading Ouroboros so that we implement Ouroboros Genesis, Ouroboros um, Chronos, and all these other implementations or improvements um, to Ouroboros that exist out there in the research phase. So this is kind of an overview of all the different uh, projects in Cardano. I should also say, I forgot to mention, but if you're, if you're looking to look more into this um, yellow box and other projects working on this, so I mentioned Mithril by OG, I mentioned State Bruce by Algorand. You may also be interested in Eigenlayer, um, which is another project that's kind of working on this um, side of the equation. Not in Cardano, they're working on the Ethereum side, um, but it might be interesting for you if you're interested in, in learning more about this kind of overlay network. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it informative. And if you have any questions, reach out to us on Twitter, on YouTube, or any other platform.